Hi, I'm Amanda Haupt. I'm a research associate here at the Allen Institute for Cell Science. And today I'm going to show you how we cryopreserve our clonal human-induced pluripotent stem cell lines in 96 well format, and then also how we recover these clones later by thawing them into 24 well plates. First, let's get a little bit of context about where we are in the gene editing workflow and why you would want to do this. So up until this point, we've edited a population of cells and maybe enriched, but that pool of cells is genetically diverse. So we want to actually pick individual clones and find out which one's been precisely edited. So we pick them into 96 fold plates and we grow them up until we have a healthy confluence of stem cells. Uh, but growing them and passaging them in 96 wells is time consuming and expensive. So we wanna just take a break from cell culture so that we can do our genetic analysis and find out which clones we would actually wanna grow later on. So to start, let's look at the cells. They should be approximately 70% confluent and they should have really good morphology. At this point, you wanna take really great notes in your notebook about the morphology and the confluence of the cells. And that's because if you end up having a bunch of clones that are genetically precise, you wanna be able to make an informed decision about which ones to thaw to make sure you have the healthiest cells possible. The other thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is pre-label the plates that you're actually gonna freeze the cells in. So these are just regular 96 wall tissue culture plates. They don't have any gel or anything. And you wanna actually write the clone numbers on the top and all the cell line information. And that's gonna help with foolproof thawing later on. I like to only put four columns of cells per plate, and that's kind of for two reasons. One, uh, it helps to have the cells spread out across the plate because they thaw faster when there's space between them. And second, uh, this is about as many columns as I would actually recommend passaging the cells at one time. The other thing that we recommend is actually having two replicate sister plates of each freeze plate. And that's so that you have a safety net when you thaw the cells. If you end up thawing one plate, then you need to go back to the other one, you still have it in the freezer. Okay, so let's get started actually taking the cells off the plate so we can freeze them. Let's make sure that we already have everything we need ready in the hood. You're gonna need PBS, Accutase, which is our single cell dissociation reagent, MTs or media supplemented with rock inhibitor, and then the actual freezing media that we use is called Cryostore CS10, and you use it at four degrees. We also have our pre-labeled plates that we're gonna freeze the cells into, and then we have this sort of special V-bottom 96 well plate, and this allows us to centrifuge and pellet the cells in suspension. The other things you're gonna want are a multi-channel pipette capable of going up to 200 microliters. It helps to have an aspirator that's also a multi-channel function. And then also things you're gonna need are a little bit of parafilm and actually a room temperature styrofoam box. Uh, and then some space and a minus 80 freezer to actually freeze the cells. So let's get started passaging. Uh, for the sake of this demonstration, I'm just gonna show you the first two columns of the plate. As I mentioned, uh, we would recommend maybe doing about four per sort of passaging session. Uh, and as you get more comfortable with it, just make sure that if you're doing more than that, you're not leaving the cells in Accutase for longer than about five minutes. So to passage, I'm going to aspirate. So my pipette is currently set to 40 microliters. So I'm going to actually go past the second stop and take up more than that to wash the cells that volume doesn't necessarily need to be specific. And then just aspirate that off. And add 40 microliters of Accutase. So now I'm actually gonna start my timer once I have the first column in Accutase and then go back for the next columns. Again, past the stop to get a little more than 40, just to wash the cells. Okay, so once all of the columns you want to passage have Accutase applied, go ahead and put this in the incubator for about three to five minutes and check it periodically. Once the cells have started to break apart in the colonies and some of them have maybe been lifted up off the bottom, then we're ready to triturate. Okay, so now that the cells have come off the plate, let's go ahead and triturate them into single cell suspension. For this, you want your pipette set to 200 microliters. And because these V-bottom plates only hold a maximum of 200 microliters, and we already have 40 microliters of Accutase in the wells, what I like to do is actually aspirate 200 of PBS, but then just 
kind of dispense them back out so that I have approximately 160 microliters in here. A little less is okay. And I'm, I'll add that to the first column. And then I'll sort of go around the clock to triturate. So a couple at about 12 o'clock, some at three o'clock, six o'clock, and nine o'clock. And I'll do that for maybe two or three times. The benefit of this is that you wanna make sure the cells get into single cell suspension, but you still wanna be delicate and not make too many bubbles. So it can be hard at first, but you will get better with time. I'll we'll go ahead and do that for the second well. Again, just sort of around the clock, trying to not make bubbles. Okay, so let's check these under the microscope and see where we're at. We want to check to make sure that the cells do get into mostly single cell suspension. This really helps the cells survive the freezing process a lot better. It also helps to check and make sure that no cells are stuck to the bottom at this stage. That's actually one of the most common ways that you can lose cells in this process, not getting them all into suspension. Okay, so now that we have a good single cell suspension, we're going to go ahead and transfer everything to the V-bottom plate so that we can actually pellet the cells. So now you'll just take up the full 200 microliters. I like to tip the plate to make sure that I got all of the volume. And you can just sort of maintain the same plate layout that you have to keep everything in order. Okay, so now we're going to centrifuge this V-bottom plate for three minutes at 385 times G. So pelleting these cells and these plates works pretty well, but I just want to show you that the pellet isn't super compact. The cells are stuck down along the whole V part, which makes the pellet rather delicate. Okay, so now we have our cells pelleted at the bottom, and I want to aspirate the supernatant off. And again, this is really fragile, so the best way to do it is to get a nice tilt on the plate, depress the plunger all the way, and then I'm just going to slide the tips until where the V bottom starts. So not to the bottom, just to sort of that first bend that you feel and then gently, slowly aspirate the supernatant off. And then I like to save the supernatant in the plate, just in case I've accidentally transferred more cells than I intended to. Um, if we lose cells, we can recover them by re-spinning the plate uh, and repeating this process. Okay, and then I'm going to re-suspend the cells in only 60 microliters of m -teaser. That's a pretty small volume. If I was just passaging uh, right now, I would use more volume, uh, but this is what we've optimized for use with our freezing protocol. So I will add 60 microliters of m -teaser with rock inhibitor. And again, just be gentle because it's a small volume. You don't want to create too many bubbles. Okay, so now let me show you the difference between what I aspirated or transferred and what I resuspended. So I want to show you uh, that I have cells that are resuspended in the V bottom plate. And then I want to compare that to the amount of cells that were actually carried away in the supernatant. So you will always have a little bit of loss at this step, but you should definitely have the majority of your cells resuspended in the media. Again, if you do have a lot of cells in the supernatant, you might consider just putting the plate back in the centrifuge and trying again. Okay, so now I have a good amount of cells resuspended. Now I want to transfer them into the two sister plates. So I'm going to transfer 30 microliters of each, which is about half of my suspension. And again, these storage plates are just regular non-coated tissue culture plates. And again, I'm only going to show you the first two columns, but in theory, you would want to go ahead and transfer all of the actual cell supernatant before you add any cryostore to the plates. So I'm going to add 170 microliters of cryostore. That gives us a total volume of 200 microliters per well in the storage plates. And 
This is DMSO containing, so at this point you want to work pretty quickly so that the cells aren't exposed for too long at room temperature. And there's no mixing at this point, just the sort of act of adding a large volume to a small volume is enough to mix the plates, mix the cells in the plate well enough. Okay, so now I'm gonna wrap these plates in parafilm and then we're gonna put them in a room temperature styrofoam box and put them at minus 80. So I have my plates and I have them in this room temperature styrofoam box and I'm gonna go ahead and just put them in our minus 80 for about 24 hours. And at that point, once the cells are frozen, you can take them out of the box and put them into a plate storage system if you have one. At this point, we're ready to thaw the clones that we want to move forward with. Ideally, these ones have genetically precise edits and were also frozen with good morphology and at a good confluence. So in the hood, we're going to want MTs or media supplemented with rock inhibitor. And then you're going to have a matrigel coated 24 well plate that's been preloaded with about one mil of warm media. I have the clone numbers pre-labeled on here. And one thing is that if you're thawing clones that were frozen with about less than 60% uh, confluence, you might consider thawing into a 96 well plate instead because you might get better viability. Uh, but for today's purposes, I'll show you the 24 well plate. I'm also just gonna thaw two of the clones um, and I have prepared conicals for each of them with about five mils of warm media prepared in there as well. So now I'm ready to get my plate out of the freezer and thaw the clones that I want. As the plates are thawing, I'll periodically check on them and wipe off the condensation, and then just check the thawing progress as well. The wells on the edge will tend to thaw first, so you wanna make sure you catch them right as that ice pellet fully disappears so that there's minimal exposure to the DMSO at room temperature. So now that the clones that we want are thawed, we'll go ahead and transfer the volume into the prepared conicals. And just very carefully take out that volume of uh, freeze media with the cells in it and then transfer it dropwise into the prepared conicals. Definitely don't need to mix at this stage. You wanna just be very careful and delicate with the cells. And again, I'm only showing you two examples right now, but hopefully depending on your plate layouts, you can minimize the number of clones you're thawing at a time to about six. And that will just help with your timing to make sure that you're not leaving the cells in the DMSO containing media for too long. Okay, so now I wanna go ahead and pellet these cells in the centrifuge at 211 times G for three minutes. Okay, now that we have uh, the cells pelleted in these conicals, uh, it's such a small number of cells, you're not gonna be able to see the pellet at the bottom, so just be really careful when you aspirate. And the way that I've found is the easiest for that, is to just place your aspirator tip sort of on the side until you hit the bend of the conical and then just tilt until you get most of the media. And a little bit left in there is gonna be okay. So I like to resuspend the cells in 500 microliters of M-teaser with rock inhibitor. And again, you wanna make sure you get all the cells but still be gentle. And then you can just add the cells dropwise to the prepared plates. And go ahead and just repeat that process for any of the other clones that you've thawed. And you would incubate the plate uh, in the incubator at 37 degrees Celsius, 5% CO2 for 24 hours until it's time to change the media to m that does not have any rock inhibitor in it. Here's an example of the cells the day after thawing. 
If the viability looks poor, you might consider feeding the cells media that has rock inhibitor in it for another 24 hours, which can help promote survival when there are a few precious living cells in the well. Depending on the number of surviving cells, in about three to seven days, the colony should be ready for passaging. So once you have a good confluence of cells in the 24 well plate, we would recommend passaging them up into a six well plate and then a 10 centimeter, which should give you plenty of cells to store them in liquid nitrogen and use them for the long term. So that's it. I hope that this protocol has been really helpful and I hope that you have great success in any of your clonal cell line generation processes where you have to freeze and thaw them. You can find more information on our website at allencell.org. When you're there, you can also find a link to our Jove protocol, which covers our entire gene editing workflow, including the clonal cell line generation process. So thanks for watching.